So it's very important for you guys when you want to write offers or list property that you talk to the client in case there's some confusion, you should probably discuss that in advance. And there are certain things that if your seller, let's say you list a property and your seller says, dude, I want that chandelier or back to the example, that ceiling fan. I want that ceiling fan to go with me. You could probably have your seller, hey, you know what? Let's take it down now before we even start showing the property. Then buyers aren't ever going to see it. All right. Now, you can't always do that because things like washers and dryers or that rose bush is that example. Couldn't take it out then because she had nowhere to put it. Okay. So let's go back, get us a new screen. And talk about some of the sub rights or actual rights that we're going to have. If we go back to this land, and I told you, physical dirt and earth plus all of the naturally occurring materials, and you own from the center of the earth to the heavens above. Well, this land rights actually have three versions. You have surface rights. Let's go back and make that pretty. You have surface rights. We actually have subsurface. And we actually have air rights. So our land can be broken into these three categories. And they can be split out. And these become important in certain areas. And as the owner, you have the right of disposition. Remember the bundle? The right of disposition is one of the rights. So you actually have the right to um, split these out. Specifically, when you're dealing with like arrow, you may have a thing what's called an air lot. What? Are you crazy? No. Think about a condo downtown where someone owns the 14th floor or a condo in the 14th floor. They're only going to own a certain height to a certain height. And we'll talk about that, actually. So that is their air lot. That developer that owned that land subdivided his airspace into air lots so that he could sell condos on the second floor, third floor, fourth floor, all right? When it comes to surface rights, there are, you could sell them or you can lease them to others. So here you've got the surface right. You've got subsurface rights and air right, rights. Now that subsurface, once again, there are many components to a subsurface. You've got oil and gas rights that can be done in there. Oil and gas rights. There are mineral rights. There are water rights. And they can be bought or leased or sold because you have the right of disposition. Think about that like a billboard alongside of a, the highway. You understand that that farmer that owns that surface has actually rented out some airspace for that billboard to the billboard company. So he is actually collecting rent on that billboard. And when those people pay that billboard lease to the owner, that some of that lease goes to the farmer. Um, there are cell towers that get space gets leased out. They might actually on a cell tower, they may lease some of the surface and part of the air. So all of these can be broken out. So you can sell your air rights, keep your surface and lease your subsurface. You can lease your surface, keep your air rights and sell your subsurface. You could lease your air rights, lease your surface rights and keep the subs. You can do whatever you want to do because you are the owner and have the right of disposition. 
go through a couple of cool examples. There was a landlord in New York City that went over and talked to this Tiffany's company that's sitting on Fifth Street in New York, and this landlord owned this building beside it, and he uh, asked the Tiffany's, hey, you guys want to um, sell your building because I want to build a tower. I want to build a big skyscraper. And Tiffany said, no, we don't want to do that. And he said, well, how about I buy the air rights above your building? And they said, well, we're never going to use our air rights, so we'll sell them to you. So he bought the air rights to that and then built over it and went out and finished building his tower. Then he went out and put his name on the t building. Pretty ingenious move. I don't care what you think politically or otherwise. That's a pretty genius move. That has been, has been used several different times. I think uh, one of the insurance companies is over the top of the Penn Station uh, subway. Uh, so you can sell different areas. In Indiana, there was a scenario. Downtown, there used to be a building called the Blocks Building that sat downtown and just to the west of that was the state capital for Indiana, here in Indianapolis, that the building set right here. These developers of that condo decided they wanted to build more stories so that they could sell more condos. Now, what happened next, you know, had to involve an attorney getting drunk because there's no way anybody in the right mind would have thought of this. What they did is they went through the process to get the zoning, they get the engineering permits, they got all the proof that they could do this. Then they went to the Indiana Historic Society and said, dude, if we build this building, it will block the sun rays from hitting the Capitol Dome and it will lose its luster to the people. And what we suggest is that we not build and we sell you our air rights above our building to keep us so that we won't build and destroy. And they actually sold the air rights above their building to the Indiana Historical Society. And they got paid $1 million to not build. That's genius. I'd love to get paid to not do something. This is an example of they owned from here to there, and then they sold the air rights above it. So now the question is, or should be, when I say you own to the heavens above, how high is that? Well, good question. There was a United States Supreme Court case that happened in 1946. It is Cosby. versus the U.S. What happened was the United States Air Force opened a defunct landing strip next to this farm that was owned by Mr. Cosby, and he was a chicken far farmer in Greensboro, North Carolina, And what he actually sued the government for was that he was a chicken farmer, and his claim was that when these jets were practicing landing and takeoff, they scared his chickens so bad that they actually ran into the shed. And I don't mean like ran in and hid. I mean like ran into and killed 150 of his chickens. And he sued the government because his claim was they were flying over his airspace. They were, via, they were actually trespassing over his airspace that he owned because I said we owned to the heavens above. Now, here's the funny thing in this. In this court case, when you read the, transcri the transcripts, they ask, how high were the jets? 
when they flew over your property. And he said, 83 feet. I'm sorry, what? Not 100 feet, not 50 feet, not about 80 feet, 83 feet. So the court cases have ruled, and there's a United States Supreme Court precedent, go back and look it up, that even though we typically own to the heavens above, they actually found in his favor, by the way, and he had to get reparations for the chickens. So he actually won this court case. Um, that there is a restriction on height, even though we own to the heavens above, all right? Because there is a betterment of the public for that airspace, right? People have tried to sue Russia for Skylab going over. There have been people that have tried to sue TWA, which doesn't exist anymore, for flying their airplanes over their property. So the courts have ruled while there is some reasonable uh, expectation to have a free airspace, at certain heights, the betterment of the public actually outweighs the ownership. So, like, I believe it's 500 feet and above. The FAA controls all that for traffic, all right? So any of the planes that fly at 500 feet and above, even though Southwest is flying over my house, I can't really try and sue them for trespassing because the government says, hey, for the betterment of the public, you are going to surrender that right because you, when you fly, Mr. Raymond Modulin, you're going to fly over someone else's property, so you're going to get the reciprocity of that benefit for the good of all of us. And we got this thing here, kind of like 83 feet, that says yes, and there's core precedents that that's reasonable expectation above my property. There's actually a gap right here. So my question to you is what flies in that gap? Yes, I am sure you guys have said it. You have got the drone thing. That's the new thing. I am kind of waiting on a court case for this because there are people all the time that are like, well, if that drone flies over my property, I'll shoot it down. Maybe, maybe not. There are other things that fly in this space, by the way, which already kind of have as a precedent set. What do you got in that space? Cell phone signals, radio signals, television signals, and the courts have already ruled that for the betterment of the public, you know, even though AT&T is sending signals over my property, it's not trespassing because it's actually carrying my cell phone signal that I want. So when you we see it going to repeaters and then to your cell phone, they have already determined, hey, you can't really sue for that. So that is the airspace. And there are some cool examples of how it actually can be subdivided down into that. Same thing goes along with subsurface. You know, there are mineral rights. I sold a house uh, several years ago in Bloomington, Indiana, which is a big quarry, and there's a lot of limestone deposit. Uh, when I listed the house the very first day, the seller was very good about telling me, hey, man, I don't own the mineral rights because I didn't buy them when I bought this house 10 years ago because the previous owner of this house sold those mineral rights to a limestone company. If they ever needed more limestone, they could take the minerals out. So he did not own them. So we had to make sure that was clear going down the line that the mineral rights did, were not included in the sale of this property. Now, the good thing is those kind of things show up on title. So when the title search was run, there was a note that said did not include mineral rights. There are other rights that people kind of tend to forget about. And these you don't forget about until you actually have a bad neighbor is when you get, you know, this kind of thing show up. And that is on the property line of two houses. And, you know, here's the property line. 
and you've got the sun and it's blocking solar rights, that's my airspace, right? That's my chainsaw, by the way. Because solar rights have become an issue, especially with solar power now coming more to the forefront. You're going to want to see something where, hey, dude, I need to get that sun here, and your tree has encroached upon my airspace. I am going to cut it down. 